Hey, it's Alex Williams, founder of The New Stack, here with Rob Genova of Basho. Hey, Rob. Hey, Alex. How are you? Good. Good. Rob today is going to show us React TS. Rob, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what is React TS and why it's important? Uh, React TS is our new database product uh, optimized for fast reads and writes of time series data. Uh, like React KV, React TS is built on top of React Core, our industry leading uh, distributed systems framework. Uh, this allows us to support both key value and time series use cases within the context of a single unified platform and, or technology that's easy to use and operate and scale. Uh, a key difference between React KV and TS is that TS co-locates data in ordered ranges and supports a data definition language that provides a measure of customization and tunability with respect to exactly how that data is partitioned. Uh, React TS also offers a SQL-like query language that supports range queries, projections, filtering, and ultimately will support aggregations. So unlike React KV, React TS allows you to define a schema with a SQL-like create table statement. Tables can include any number of columns with the usual data types like integer, floating points, var char, timestamp, boolean, etc. Uh, the columns in this example are used to store water-related measurements by location. Uh, every table must include a timestamp column as well as a primary key definition. And the primary key uses time quantization to allow the user to specify the extent to which ordered ranges of data are partitioned together in the cluster. Uh, so the quantum function in this example, shown right here, groups data into one day chunks, uh, but valid time units also include seconds, minutes, hours, months, and years. Uh, primary keys are defined by a combination of the quantum function as well as a series ID, which is the location field in this, this example. Finally, a uh, bucket type is created uh, using the standard React admin command that folks uh, that use KV would be familiar with. Um, and the bucket type create statement includes the table definition as one of its properties. So the code snippet here demonstrates how to create and store a time series row with the React Java client. The columns in each row are required to be in uh, the correct order as well as have the correct types based on the schema that was defined uh, for the table. Uh, Timestamps are required to be in milliseconds since the epoch. And in React uh, 1.0, data validation will be server-side, but client-side validation will be supported in future versions. The, the clients and the API itself allow you to uh, write multiple rows of data at a time um, by simply putting that data in some sort of a list. So for reading data, uh, React TS facilitates reads through its support for a SQLite query language. Queries consist of standard select statements uh, that allow you to specify a time range, uh, a series ID, as well as which subset of your columns uh, that you'd like to return. You can use secondary fields optionally to filter the result set. And this standard set of logical operators apply to that. So operators like, you know, equals, not equals, greater than, less than, et cetera. Uh, the first example here shows uh, standard select star from table query, while the second example, uh, you know, shows the selection of a single field and is also filtering on a secondary field, in this case, the temperature field. So tell me quickly, how, how do you optimize the reads there? Primarily through the co-location and the ordering of the primary data. This allows us to service queries from a minimum number of, and a tunable number of partitions, uh, which allows the system to avoid the expensive coverage queries that would be necessary if you were to use secondary indexes to uh, perform the same sort of query. Uh, we are also filtering data at the level of the storage backend. So in the previous uh, example, you know, we filtered on the temperature field filtering of that data rather than being at the coordinator after subqueries return their full result sets, the filtering of that data will happen at the level of the storage backend, which provides another level of efficiency and minimizes network overhead. 
Also, the query language itself, uh, being a subset of SQL, offers a measure of flexibility and familiarity to the user, which is another optimization. So in conclusion, is there anything you'd like to sum up about React TF? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to talk a bit about how we differentiate. Uh, and I think, you know, a key way that we do that is, you know, has to do with the maturity, the reliability, and the ease of use of the underlying highly scalable architecture. Um, I'd also like to, you know, reference the multi data center replication capabilities. They're also an inherent part of that architecture and that are, will ultimately be inherited by the uh, TS database as well. Um, and then finally, our, the way we've designed this was to optimize it specifically for time series uh, rather than, you know, simply create a more generic big table implementation. And I, and I think that, you know, provides again another measure of uh, ease of use uh, for the user. Okay, great. Well, Rob, thank you very much for taking some time to show us React TS. Is there anything else in conclusion that you'd like to say, or can we call that a wrap? Uh, just that if you want to learn more, you can go to our website at basho.com or go directly to our TS product page at basho.com forward slash products forward slash react hyphen TS. Great. Well, thanks, Rob, for your time. I'm Alex Williams of the new stack. We'll catch up soon, Rob. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Alex.